Many thanks for welcoming me here and giving me this opportunity this afternoon. I see many friends in the audience today, and so hello also to all of you and to the many new people too. I know that the audience today is very mixed, and so given that I only have 12 minutes, I'm going to concentrate on more introductory areas rather than um, detailed explorations of climate smart practices. But I hope that will be a suitable platform for many side discussions that people can have who are more interested in the details. I'd also like to say that today I've been asked to talk about practices, about what we can do technically and with institutions in agriculture and food systems. Now, with all of these kinds of uh, interventions, they also need to be supported by policy and by finance, which will be the subject of the next webinar. So please, with everything I say, um, understand that it, it needs to be within the context of, of wider policies. OK. Just to make it as simple as possible, I've drawn this diagram which shows the farmer at the center and the, farm, the farmer managing their own farm, where there will be land to manage, energy, water, crops, livestock, and fisheries, or some mix of those. Around the farm is, is the broader landscape, which you can see marked in green. Um, this is management, um, climate smart management, to balance different land uses, forestry, natural grasslands, peatlands, waterways, watersheds, and so on in a balanced whole. Next, most farms and landscapes are linked into wider food systems. So they link from the left all of the inputs that go in, particularly fertilizers and energy, but also the seeds and information and other inputs that are needed and then go out, the, the food and other produce that comes out, goes out into wider value chains, which might be very local, they might even be international, and through to processors, traders, and finally consumers. And then finally marked in pink is that all of this is supported by services, and these services too were critical to support climate smart uh, practice within farms and food systems and landscapes. So what I'm going to do now for the rest of the presentation is just to try to give you a few examples of climate smart options for each of these, for farming systems, for landscapes, for food systems, and for services. So let's take the landscape level first of all. Here the important point is to try to create a balance and diversity of land uses that deliver adaptation for climate change, that deliver current food security and secure livelihoods, and also, where possible, have co-benefits for, for mitigation. So these include balances amongst forestry and agriculture, but also management of water over wide scales, um, often over the scales of entire watersheds and basins, also land management at that scale. And finally, of course, the management of livestock and wildlife. One example here is sustainable land management in Ethiopia, a program over the last several years run by the Ethiopian government and with external financial support has rehabilitated nearly 200,000 hectares of land, putting in place uh, erosion reduction mechanisms and a lot of replanting of, of uh, multiple kinds of vegetation and particularly trees. Nearly 100,000 households have benefited from this in multiple ways. So better management of water with new waterways to manage on-season on, on and off-season water, much greater composting, and availability of cut-and-carry feed for livestock. So you can see the multiple benefits there to uh, people's immediate livelihoods and food security, to longer-term resilience, to further risks and stresses as well as the mitigation benefits from increased carbon storage. Turning now to options for crops and fields, some of these will be around the actual crops that are grown. We speak now of climate-ready species. These, the, what that means is very context-specific. It might mean 
salinity tolerance in one setting um, or otherwise drought tolerance in another. It, um, Alexander put appropriate um, emphasis on increasing efficiency both of nutrient use and of water use um, within, within cropped fields. This will also be critical. The mix of crops as well, agroforestry, intercropping, uh, diversification of crop types are all possible climate smart options. And many of these are already done by farmers. Uh, many of you working all over the world will have already seen farmers that you work with changing the, their planting dates in particular or their harvesting practices to deal with the currently changing weather patterns that they're seeing. So one example here is, is in rice. Um, in Vietnam, uh, the alternate wetting and drying system is now in place amongst millions of farmers. And essentially, it's a practice in which, instead of keeping rice fields continuously wet, they're allowed to drain for certain periods during the growing season. The benefit for farmers is using less irrigation water and less energy to pump that water. So overall, there's 30% less water use. It also decreases the methane emissions from rice fields by up to 50%. So farmers are in, in enjoying lower costs without any yield reduction. And this leads to food security benefits for them and productivity benefits, as well as the mitigation benefits that you see. Moving next to livestock, um, in livestock, much of many of the advantages uh, revolve around trying to improve the diets of livestock, um, either where, where it's possible through pasture improvement or changing artificial feeds. But for pastoral systems, it would be very much about the way in which different grazing areas are used during the year. Farmers are also, another option for them is herd management. Depending on the conditions that their livestock are facing, they may want to change the age st structure of their stock, slaughter at younger ages. There are also um, a range of climate-ready species and breeds. Uh, for example, in East Africa, uh, the number of camels, for instance, um, are increasing as, as a means of dealing with drier and less predictable rainfall conditions. While in other systems, such as in Europe, where mitigation may be more of a priority, there's an emphasis on breeds that uh, produce fewer emissions from enteric fermentation. So the example I'm going to give you here is, again, very much about uh, landscape management as well as cattle management. Brazil stands out as a country that has a achieved large-scale emissions reductions in agriculture and land use, 40 percent. And this has come about through very careful land zoning and protecting of forested areas, combined with improving pasture quality for cattle. This is largely done through um, planting le le legumes in the pastures. And they've been able to achieve 45 percent higher stocking density and improve yields while reducing deforestation. Effectively, they decoupled um, agricultural productivity from deforestation and expansion into forest lands. Uh, moving next to fisheries and aquaculture, sometimes this is a neglected area in talking about climate smart agriculture when indeed aquaculture is perhaps one of our most promising ways of providing human protein needs in, in future. Uh, the many options here um, revolve again around efficiency, and particularly for the fisheries sector, reducing the many losses and wastage, particularly at the harvest stages. There are also important issues around where um, fish feed comes from in aquaculture systems. So reducing dependence on external marine supplies of fish food is a priority. There are also basic issues around improving the physical defenses against sea surges, remembering that many aquaculture systems are in coastal areas, fish farms in coastal areas. And an example here, I've taken an example from China, but integrated 
aquaculture systems are now seen in, in many countries of the world, Canada, the Philippines, Vietnam, China are among a few. Uh, the, the idea here is to combine finfish, mollusks, and sea, uh, sorry, water plants together in single systems so that you have a circular feeding model rather than having a high reliance on external feed inputs and external energy inputs. Uh, in China, they've managed to achieve systems which, in which the aquaculture systems are actually net carbon sinks as well as providing diversified food outputs for farmers, um, for aquaculture farmers, to increase their income streams and their local food security. Many of you voted um, in, in the um, poll that we had just before the presentation that actually looking across the whole food system and the whole value chain um, is the most important thing to do. This was also highlighted in the uh, working group two of the recent IPCC report. In looking at adaptation options, uh, the authors pointed out that we've concentrated very heavily on agricultural production without looking at what we can do in the ways of managing uh, food, food chains and ultimate pr um, consumer practices. So some of our options here are to reduce post-harvest losses and waste among consumers and indeed to change our diets towards less emissions intensive um, or, or um, less emissions intensive diets and also diets that are lower in very climate vulnerable crops and livestock. An example here from the United Kingdom is the Love Food Hate Waste campaign which works with consumers, schools and local governments to reduce consumer food waste. It's resulted in 13% less food waste over a period of, of four years with considerable savings to consumers, the national water footprint, and to greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, um, just to point out that we also should have a good look at climate smart services. These are particularly offering information services and financial services to farmers, as well as research on our constantly changing agricultural conditions under, under climate change. Um, a useful example here is the improvement of seasonal weather forecasts in Senegal, as well as in many other West African countries, including Mali. This has been an important focus for them as, as climate change uh, increases variability of weather and risk. In Senegal now, three million farmers are receiving forecasts through community radio stations in their own local languages. There's been considerable work to make sure that these forecasts are in usable forms that, that farmers can use themselves. And as you can see from the slide, it includes systems where farmers can also track, monitor, and forecast their own weather using local systems. And one pilot study has shown that, that the better the improved ability to forecast the season and to know when to plant and when to harvest has already achieved better food security outcomes for farmers. So I'll stop there. It's just an introduction and overview. Those are just a few amongst many hundreds, if not thousands, of climate smart options. What I've tried to show you is that these are often not new wine. They're proven low-cost practices they are achievable at large scale. Um, a, another background document was circulated prior to this with, in which we provided 14 examples of large-scale climate smart agriculture. And the best idea is to integrate, integrate across a number of interventions, not apply them one by one. And finally, just to conclude, these are not only vital for future food supplies, but all of these practices are already in the hands of farmers and of businesses and of governments. So thank you very much.